Good evening, welcome to tonight's Hearthstone Half Hour. I'm Hammy, this is Falcroft Cast, hope you're well and good. We are going to be jumping into some ladder, laddering and learning. It is Wednesday, we always take a look at ladder. At the moment we're bouncing around at round about rank 9, so we're going to take a look at what is going well for us in the ladder, and what it, we are struggling with as well. We're going to see some decks that we're coming up against. We're going to start with Control Warrior, I've been mixing between Mech Shaman and Control Warrior. Um, of course, metagame, the kind of decks you see, swings to and from, swings to and fro, various trends within a season. So we will see what is good right now, and we'll see how we match up against it. Um, there have been many, many weapons rogues flying around. I did try going to Mech Shaman to switch to that, and then suddenly Face Hunters have come back as well. So, then what we see, I'm currently just clinging on to rank 9. Um, been a bit up and then a bit down uh, with Mech Shaman, so we're going to jump back into Control Warrior for the time being, see how it goes, maybe jump into Mech Shaman in a bit, and see what kind of decks we come up against too. Okie dokie, so Control Warrior is in the uh, right hand side of your screen. It is pretty much a traditional Control Warrior, yeah. but with the, the tweaky techness of Crush from Goblins and Arms. Trying that out as a control option has worked very well for me in some situations. Um, Harrison Jones is in there because we had been seeing a lot of weapons flying around. Playing against a Shaman, I'm guessing this is probably going to be a Mech Shaman. <coughs> I would very much like early game control. Acolyte of Pain, risk throwing that back. Um, I'm really looking for Fury War Axes, Cruel Taskmasters, and similar. To at least try and force some table trades with, so we'll see how those go. So turn one, nothing for me really here. Sylvanas, not so good. Executing Shield Slam, Ugh, it's not the greatest start against a Shaman in the world, but we'll see how it goes. And still nothing for our Shaman Companion. So, so far, maybe that it's going to be a little bit more of a mid-range Shaman. No, there's the Whirling Zapomatic that confirms it as being the Mech Shaman list that is pretty popular right now. In fact, I've been running a version of it, so we can always have a look at it on some other occasion. First things first, Shield Slam. I want that off the table as soon as possible. The Whirling Zapomatic with Wind Fury could be doing 6 damage next turn, could be doing a nasty 12 damage if they have a Rock Biter weapon in hand as well. So, a nasty combo for this Mech Shaman. In comes a 4 drop from our opponent. What's it going to be? It's probably going to be whatever this card is they're floating around in front of us. In comes a Mechanical Yeti for attack 5 health. Shield Slam would have been very, very nice on that. So Despite will certainly not. I can remove that next go with Despite. Shield blocking and drawing a card would certainly potentially accelerate me, accelerate me into something a little bit nicer on turn 5. So really the decision here is, is it a question of lots of armour or get the weapon out and start setting myself up for removal. I'm going to grab the weapon, set myself up for removal. Next turn I can hit that once in the face to remove it. Or I can hit something else for the 4 damage and then use the execute to pick it up um, afterwards. And now we see the Shredders come into play. This is the follow-up mid-game of this Mech Shaman. So they will be throwing in a bunch of stuffs. Welcome to PG, welcome to T, all of you folks joining on stream. Good to have you with us. Um, so, options now. I think very much a shield block has to be done. Got another Death Spite there. I can execute one of these minions if I want. First things first, let's put our armor on. Sylvanas can be get dropped next go. Potentially. Now, do I want to remove one? I can actually remove both of these. Um, so, the one I'm going to remove first is this one. The reason for that because I would like to see what it's... Oh, that is very fortunate for my opponent. He's playing a mech deck and of all the two drop mechs, all the two drops you can grab, <laughs> grabs the one that is most useful. So, we're a little bit frustrated, a little bit frustrated by that. It's not great because, of course, if he does have mechs in hand, then they're going to be summoning in more eggs. Down goes Nazir Drake, saying at least he's not benefited from the Met Warper this turn. But our opponent has got a fairly solid mid-game, mid-table. So far so solid, so far so good. Um, for us, options here now. Getting rid of that Drake 
nice, probably want to do that. Equally with the mech wall, but I know that my opponent is going to have more mechs. They're going to have um, spider tanks. They're going to be packing um, Anoyatrons and all kinds of stuff. Perhaps another mech yeti. Maybe some more shredders. So removing this is going to make sure that whatever is in hand it's going to be a little bit slower to get on the table. So that feels like the right play, even though this is going to be doing me more damage. Sylvanus basically leaves me passive for a turn and lets my opponent set up more. They might go for some removal. I'm going to go proactive with this, and I'm going to, strange enough, remove that one. Next turn, we can be dropping Sludge Belcher or Sylvanus. Should be pretty good. So, in comes the Fire Elemental, straight damage up, 6 next turn, I can take 6 from it next turn, 2, and we have removal options on the table. I can throw myself into that, I can then execute. Now, do I shield block and get myself armoured up, or do I get table position with the Belcher? There's quite a lot of nasty burst. Um, not the greatest move here, that was a bit of a misplay, I should have done my combo before I actually... I'm doing one damage to my Sludge Belcher that I did not need to do, so just made it one damage more. One damage more likely to get removed. One damage closer to being removed from the table, which is no good whatsoever. <laughs> Dot Boom comes down, no massive surprise there. This Mech Shaman, when it gets to this stage, really the Fire Elementals and the Dot Boom, if I can deal with Dot Boom here, then I'm in a good position. So. First things first, I've got my big game hunter there. It's a very obvious, nice little removal play. Um, I can deal with these, I can let these get attacked. Um, Sludge Belcher um, will then probably get done in a little bit with my remaining five. I could freeze one of those, but there are probably larger and nastier threats I'd like to get rid of. Um, the Taskmaster is an option this could I could use to just remove one of these. I was thinking about the war, war axe as well. And who's going to get the damage? I get the damage. I can take the damage here. I might get to take two here. Just the one. I've got quite fortunate there. Not many of these mech shamans packing lightning storm. So some will drop in a lava burst, I believe it's called. The uh, five damage, two mana, two overload shaman spell card. Um, but not many with lightning storms. So really unless the shaman's teched in something else of course fire elemental can drop that three damage down and comes a rock by we're going to see a one mana removal of my sludge belcher there sludge and comes the spider tank as well okay so freezing corner comes in probably gonna go yep strain on there we've now got all of the Cogmasters coming out. This is the early game for this Mech Shaman deck. Quite popular at the moment because it mid-ranges. It lets you do the sort of rush of Mech in the early game, supported with some pretty chunky spells, but also let you punch um, a lot in the mid-game. However, when it gets to the late game, as a control warrior, if I can stick this out for long enough, then I should be in a very strong position. Whirlwind. I can't. I can get rid of Spider Tank. I'll get rid of two of my own minions by doing so, though, which is a little unfortunate. So, is there another way that I can get rid of Spider Tank? There is. By getting rid of Spider Tank, those are going to become a lot less threatening. So, I think we're probably going to go into. Could remove just these one by one is an option. Whirlwind sadly is going to remove these off of me. No problem. I'm trying to decide the control route. Could drop in for Sylvanus as well. Sylvanus could get some nice table pressure on there. I have no time for I'm gonna go for Sylvanus. If I remove this, there's a good chance my opponent's just going to play another mech and, and buff these up again. These obviously trigger off a mech to attack while you have a mech. Right, time is running out. I need to make some decisions. I can afford to lose the tank. I will probably lose this next turn. I'm going to swing in. Um, I'm actually going to. I am gonna. I'm gonna lose the minions. I'm gonna lose the minions. A little bit rushed at the end there. We'll see if that was the right decision or not. I've lost a couple of minions. In comes the rock biter, and actually, I've lost my Sylvanas for nothing, which is not good. It's a very inefficient play there. Good for my opponent. In comes an Azure Drake with some card draw. 
totemic call. The thing is, my opponent is now trying to top deck big minions, so if I can get my combos off and swing for the kill, I'm in a very good position here. So, um... I now know it's going to be pretty hard for my opponent to be really... I pause and a little sneeze there. So it's going to be pretty important. For, uh, tough. My opponent may well have a crackle. Two crackles generally in this deck. Goblins versus gnomes. I think it's three to six. Final mental does two. Power mace. Attacking directly with a power mace is going to remove that. Done. Okay. So taking the sacrifice of that. Um, in comes a shield maiden, so I can add Extraza, or I can actually use it to heal myself back up. Um, I think in this case, if I shield maiden, freeze that, and armor up, it gets myself in a nice solid good position. Could have thrown this down onto the table, healed my opponent by one. For the pressure. So we've got a nice frozen fire elemental there. Then goes the flame tongue, buffing up a little bit of extra damage everywhere. I can of course trade that straight away. Remember as finishes in this deck we've got Ragnaros, I've still got Dog Boom, so I've got lots of finishes, but I just need to make sure my opponent's still got me down to a, a not insignificant level of health. This deck has got more than enough burst to take us out. However, this is where a lovely little play comes in. Harrison Jane's also works against Mech Shane. Because that means I can actually just go ahead and remove that. In comes Dot Boom, in comes Whirlwind. And they've just retired. So, well played. The reason for that retiring is because our opponent has actually kind of run out of damage at the end. Um, what I'm just going to do before we jump into our next game is we're sort of in a little ladder and learn mode is I'm going to show you my mech shaman list I say my mech shaman list it's a one that's been bouncing around on the hearth porn website so this is roughly what our opponent would have been running we saw the power maces we didn't see a lava burst sometimes that's swapped out for a lightning storm but you can effectively see with this deck loads of early to mid game pressure when you get to the late game we got rid of the azure drakes we got rid of the fire elemental and we dealt with dr boom so my opponent played the Yeti, they played a Shredder I think as well. So really you can see in this late game stage if my opponent has not got rid of me by the mid to the mid late game, we're talking four to six, seven mana range, they've not managed to finish me by then, my control deck should win out because I've got a lot of bigger late game threats and they don't have so much stuff to damage me with. So it was really a survival game there. So that was a good, nice little example of that. Let's keep going with Control Warrior. I'm feeling it for the moment. Let's see how we go. So let us see what is next up and see what we can rock and roll we Okay, we have a mage. I'm going to assume that this is mech mage until otherwise stated. And really, execute, right, nothing I can do huge damage with. I'm going to drop all of those, keeping the armor smith. Uh, generally due to its full health pool for some trading. I would like, I did not get early game cards. The one shining light in there is that I got Brawl. Brawl could, against a mech mage, pull me back a bit um, in the mid game. But I'm, And I've also got the Belcher. So I can Brawl on turn four if I really need to due to coining. Down goes a zombie child that immediately says to me we might be playing a freezer or a storm mage rather than the usual kind of mageness. So, not many mech mages are going to pack Zombie Chow. Zombie Chow generally tries to trade the minions off the table. Um, do I... I'm going to I'm gonna take the bite with Furia War Axe. Take two damage. Heal up two damage because of the Zombie Chow's ability. Down goes another Chow. So, he's quite happy for me to remove... He's using these as stalling cards. He's going to be quite happy for me to swallow these up with my weapon. Um, I'm still going to take the bait. If um, now it's important to note that if they, uh, if a snow chugger hits the table next, then I've very rashly spent my uh, 
my Fury War Axe there. He's used those to draw me out before. Um, no, I just get a Fire Blast. Very much a Storm Mage we're looking at here. They're going to be trying to freeze me, lock down all my cards, control me, and then in the late game start swinging in with nasty spells and so on. So, things they'll try and use, they will try and use Blizzard for mega mega freezing and doing damage. Therefore, if I get my Armorsmith, if I get my um, Acolyte down on the table, you can see it. He didn't take that out in one go, but at least I've got armor, I've drawn a card. I'm getting to accelerate a little bit into my game a bit more. So good, all of my mid-game threats are slowly appearing. Strike. Belcher, Sylvanas, Geddon, Gromash, Whirlwind, Brawl. I've got control. I don't have a cruel taskmaster. Some executes might be good. You will see duplicates or mirror images come up from this deck. They'll try and use your minions against you. The problem if you're playing a mage and they have mirror image is that in the late game I've got lots of big threats, which is true, but with a mirror image I need to try and play into the mage and understand where I can hide from those threats. So a lot of the time you want to try and play a cruel taskmaster or something that you can destroy so that if the mage summons a mirror of your minion then you're going to be able to deal with it quickly because it's a small minion. Obviously, if you are no many is the time when I've played a sludge belcher and my opponent summoned a sludge belcher, and then there's trouble all around. So, interestingly, you see no attack from my opponent here. Wants to see how I'm going to deal with Sylvanas. If I Sylvanas into Sylvanas, then we've just got lots of Sylvanas related robbery. My opponent can damage his own Sylvanas. If I brawl at this point, everything will die, and then Sylvanas will steal what remains, if anything of mine indeed remains. So, Brawling at this point in time a little bit too risky. If I Sylvanas and leave this up, my opponent can somehow remove all of this and then Sylvanas into Sylvanas, they'll steal something left over. This is where you're trying to uh, play Megali ahead of what's going on. So, Sylvanas can take this out, that can take this out. I'm going to go for the let's draw lots of cards. Break. And really, if my opponent decides to crack through this, then they're going to be stealing something a little bit. But at the end of the day, I've managed to armor up, get locked down, get in, going to cause chaos. But I need to be dealing with Sylvanas. I could just let my opponent steal this by charging into it. it might even destroy a little thing. So I'm going to. Sylvanas is the card that always needs to, you know, it's good, and you can see the trouble it's just caused me there. I'm not even sure that I've made the right play, because Sylvanas makes you think. And look, opponent trying to kill own Sylvanas and steal my stuff, and there it goes. So, let's see what they actually steal. Let's hope they steal the Slewd. Okay, they stole the Acolyte. That means they can draw some cards with it. But it could have been worse. So, in the scheme of things, I don't mind too much. Down goes a secret. That could well be a mirror entity, as we were just discussing. Out comes an Annoyatron. Um, my opponent decides to do lots of mirror entitying. I'm going to be in some challenging positions. So, I can brawl to get rid of all this. If I throw down a Geddon, my opponent Geddons, I can then not big game Hunter this turn. A Death Spite will let me punch through this. Sylvanas. Summoning another Sylvanas is very problematic, so you can see that I'm just worried this is a mirror entity. And judging by this kind of deck, there's a very good chance it will be. I don't have anything really small enough that I want to play in risk. What I can do is I can play a big game hunter, but then I lose the opportunity to remove something. So I'm going to check, check for mirror entity. It's not a mirror entity, and I've effectively wasted a play there, which is very, very frustrating. So let us punch our way through. We're going to get ourselves set up. Now, of course, our, my opponent... Now that they've seen the weapon come out, it's going to freeze me. And I, I could have get in there, so maybe that was a little bit premature. Also, if my opponent plays a big card, I've lost one of my sources of removal, which is very sad as well. And they can draw more cards with this, so it's going to be an interesting game. Opponent in a very good position indeed. I'm putting mulling over now. I fully expect we'll get a water elemental to the Ah, interesting. I've just gone for a straight trade. Harrison Jones, definitely playing some kind of storm mage here. Gets rid of my weapon, draws card, destroys my own. Opponent is laughing all the way to the bank with that play. Certainly. 
so I can do this. Now we can see if it's a duplicate. At the moment it's looking as though it's going to be potentially an ice block. I've not attacked my opponent, they could gain a time and when I attack them directly as well of course. So see what they can do there. So assuming my opponent's playing some kind of stall, in which case I need to just kill them before they get me. However, as it gets into the late game, it's going to be a what comes the big game hunter. And alas, my Baron Giddon is wasted. Now goes a Belcher. Excellent for stalling purposes. Problems abound. So, first things first, I'm going to shield block. A despite will help me start removing stuff. I'm going to throw down no Sylvanas, see what I can steal. Spellbreaker, Silence of Sylvanas means it can be picked off Echo of Medivh. Echo of Medivh, evil card. My opponent now has one of all of those again and is going to be able to stall and control me very, very nicely. So I've now got two such belches to punch through. I can still do this, but it's not going to be easy. Um, options. Well, I'm going to say Brawl until the table is a lot more ugly looking. Crush, if there's something big and nasty, I can use that too. I think really my play at this point, I'm going to throw myself in. There's a little bit of my armor that's stacked up. Of course, I'm going to start getting attacked, but I do have Brawl. Now, I'm holding out on Brawl just one more turn. I, could, I may well expect another Sludge Belcher down, and if so, that's when Brawl's going to come into it, same. I keep your Hillbot, a very surefire sign of stalling. Five mana left, I could really see another one of these coming in. They've got one in hand. A Mad Scientist gives more secrets. Three mana for the attack. So, it's shield block to start with, and let's keep the armor nice and high. Execute, well, I can completely clear table, but I know another belch is going to go down. So the real question is, what to remove? Am I waiting too late for this brawl? Should I throw the brawl in and risk? I already know that there's another one of those in hand, there's another one of those in hand, and there's another one of something else as well, I can't quite remember what it was but grabbed a bunch of uh, lots of minions already. It may well be that this is in vain. Remember, of course, I've got Crush that I can use later. Two Executes as well. Okay. I'm going to throw in an Execute. Throw in a Whirlwind. Things I don't want to be Echo of Medivhed. What have we got left? We've got Alex Straza, we've got Ragnaros, I do have Doc Boom. There's plenty of ways still to finish this game. But I need to make sure I'm alive. So much Belcher, we knew that was going to come down. Brawl can not come out next time. A few attacks to the face, five mana left, five last for two. See, chipping, chipping away, I expect freezes. My opponent's nice and high on health, feeling good. So first things first, now we can do the brawl. Two of those come in, double secrets, and I just do not know. Secret, one of them was a duplicate. And alas and alack, because that's died, two copies into hand. So the real question is, what died first? I think if uh, if it's left to right in terms of what was put into hand, this is one of those things that I kind of need to check up on. It was the Sludge Belcher, two Sludge Belchers, there's no way of me getting through here. So you can see the duplicates, the stalling, my opponent's put a really good stall out here. So I can crush one of these out of the way, but the real question is how do I just punch through all of this to actually win? Problematic. Ragnaros will kill something before getting killed, I think that's safe to say. I'm going to shield Maiden and armor up. Reason for that. Um, if I get this damaged but not destroyed, then it means I can crush for three men. Not that it helps with the two eight drops in my hand. If I can punch one of those out of the way, at least it's going to let Ragnaros or something fight for a little bit more value. Still got another secret kicking around up there as well. 
This is a very evil stall. I mean, I've not actually seen a, a, a stall this solid. Um, I think it's the combo of the duplicates. They've gone for duplicate rather than mirror entity. And you saw the Echo of Medivh there. That's a very nice card from Goblins vs. Names. Still 10 mana left. They could drop a Ragnaros, all kinds of things now. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Holding out on that 8 mana now. Harrison is just not going to let me do loads. Um, so I can drop a Harrison. Pop one of those in. I'm actually going to go for a crush now. And as soon you see, I'm using up my last removal. So if my opponent's got a Ragnaros or some big evil finishing card, they've seen me use two executes and a crush and a brawl. So they're probably and I've dropped, of course, my um, big game hunter. So if this person's counting my cards, they will full well know that I've spent most of my control. Full on trade, traded everything on the table. Down goes Kalthuzad. <laughs> Fair enough. And a fire blast. Interesting. Now, of course, with the duplicates, my opponent's got loads of minions. And look at everything that gets respawned there. Very awkward indeed. And remember, everything that dies is going to get brought back to life. So, I don't have another brawl. Removing all of these is going to be pretty tough. Belcher, remember, of course, he can suicide everything into me and it will come alive again. So I'm going to yo-ho it and hope. Kill through Zad, 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 kill through Zad. Uh, I think it kills Zad. <laughs> Shame it's not on our side of the table. <laughs> it's a triple slewed. And the power of slewed is in. So, actually just charging everything to my face. Dango's Water Elemental, and we can see the stalls work well. I could, uh, this deck and my deck, this actually works very well against a Control Warrior. It's hard for me to play around it. So Gromash can do some removal. I've got my Gromash finisher if I really wanted to. Um, my opponent can charge whatever they want into my Gromash at the end to finish it. Really, all I'm doing here now is just removing minions and praying for the YOLO. Remove kill for Zat. Remove kill for Zat. Of course, that gets respawned. Oh, I did to the face. So, this is pretty much, I'm afraid, a loss. <laughs> sadly, 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 sadly. So a very interesting deck this. Spellbreaker comes in, Sans is my rag, no, Sans is Gromash, and this is pretty much going to be a loss. My opponent could charge in and kill these if they wanted to, but they don't need to. They got me so locked under control. No deck can punch through that many sludge belches. Incredibly evil indeed. So Shield Slam is now a moot point at this point. Good game. So there we go, one shuffle up, one shuffle down, and ironically Mech Shaman would have been very good against that deck, would have charged in, done a lot of damage early. And there we have it. So thank you so much for tuning in to that Ladder and Land tonight. We did a quick half hour, a couple of games, a couple of slower games and away, and we took a look at a Mech Shaman. We took a look at a very interesting stall deck, and very, very painful indeed in that last game, but that mage still very interesting. Nice use of duplicate, nice use of Echo of Medivh to scoop up even more sludge belchers. Um, so hard to break through one or two sludge belchers, let alone about four. <laughs> and that let my opponent get out Kel'Thuzad and finish up. It's an interesting deck. Might have to find the list for that and try and take a look and see how it goes. So thank you for tuning in. If you're live, uh, do come visit us twitch.tv forward slash Felcrosscast. We're live Monday through Friday on the schedule you can see bottom left. Um, do check us out YouTube as well, youtube.com forward slash Felcroftcast there. And we'll always tweet on at Felcroftcasts just before we go live. Um, and indeed, we try to go live at the same time every day. So thank you very much for tuning in. This is Felcroftcast. I've been Hammy. Hopefully see you again with some more Hearthstone Half Hour. Take it easy.